an accidental foul. We'll go to the scorecards after the fourth round. Fight is sanctioned by the WBO. Paco Vacasel is the president, and he is in attendance. Delorme is coming off a split decision win over Henry Lunday for the NABF 140-pound NABO title. Terrence Crawford in the red and black. Former lightweight champ moving up now to 140. That's from 135 to 140. Starting out fighting orthodox as a right-handed fighter. Delorme has trained for some six weeks for this. Eight weeks, actually. And is in magnificent physical condition. And you'll see a lot of that from Delorme. Wide overhand rights. I've always liked Delorme's style. I think he's a tall, rangy fighter who fights tall. And uh, he's got a very good, strong, hard punch. And he is going to be at his natural weight, of course. And we're all waiting to see how Crawford will take this jump up. And will they carry his power into the higher division? Well, Crawford can box. He can punch, too. His knockouts are more of accumulation uh, sort. 25 victories. He's got 17 knockouts. Delorme has 14 KOs and 22. Delorme's really come out with intent here in round one. Yes, he's he has, it, it, Richard, and he has to. But Bud is, is going to be a little bit quicker than he is, especially with those uh, overhand or right overhand shots that uh, Delorme will throw. But Delorme has a decent jab, and he can hold Bud off a little bit. But is uh, what Timothy uh, or Terrence Crawford goes by. Yeah, that was a, that's actually a childhood nickname. His mom started calling him that when he was about one year old, and it stuck. Everybody just calls him Bud. One thing I do like about uh, Crawford is he is really relaxed in that ring. It's a great advantage for a fighter if you can be as relaxed in the ring as he normally is. You can see the intensity of Delorme trying to take this first round, and of course the idea of uh, Joe Rosa who uh, works with him is to make Terrence feel his power early so he gets some respect from him. Terrence uh, thing is speed. Delorme is his power to try to take advantage of his size. Terrence looks to me as though he's kind of studying Delorme figuring him out as he goes along here in round number one. 45 seconds to go in the round not a lot between the two of them here. You see these little feints that Crawford is offering him. He's probably trying to see, Colonel, how Delorme reacts to them. He's not really throwing them with intent to land anything now. He's just feigning and kind of studying Delorme and uh, studying his moves. But his feints have made Delorme miss a lot. Delorme has uh, roundhouse about five or six times in this round, and he hasn't landed one yet. And that's the quickness of uh, Terrence Crawford. Closing seconds of the first round. Not much between the two of them in this round. Ah! A lot of posturing, a lot of missing. What do you think, Christina? That's a tough one. I mean, they were both trying to figure themselves out, but I feel like Delorme maybe put more of the pressure. He was a little more aggressive, where I think Terrence was being conservative, kind of figuring it out. So if I had to go based on just aggression, I would give this round to Delorme. Yeah, me too. I thought Delorme had the edge in that round. Just basically he came out doing a little bit more. Well, I thought uh, Terrence used it as a feeling out round. Of course, we should remember, too, in the fight with the Gamboa, that Gamboa had the edge in the, some of those early rounds. And, and Crawford, as he... He picks up strength as he goes along in a fight. He picks up strength, you see, just as strong at the end of the fight as he is at the beginning of the fight. And that'll be a question of Delorme, who's the bigger guy, if he can be as strong towards the middle and the end rounds as he was in round number one. I agree with the two of you in that first round. Very close, not a lot between them, but just on aggressiveness and probably landing a few heavier blows. I'll go with uh, Delorme in the first round as well. Here we go, round number two. Yeah, it really is just amazing that Terrence Crawford would end up fighter of the year last year, and it was well-deserved. I don't think you heard any arguments about that. And a year and a half, nobody knew who he was a year and a half ago. Amazing. Well, in the United States, he's fighting on the opening fight and the HBO, uh, and that, that's something that he's wanted to do, and uh, he's done that a couple of times now, and that's worked out well for him, and he's... Uh, Promoted, of course, by Top Rank, and you know because you've been around Top Rank as long as I have, Rich, 
nobody develops fighters better than top rank. Uh, Bruce Trampler and Carl Moretti, that whole crowd, they do a great job. Matchmakers and Brad it's Goodman, all, all those guys are unbelievable. It's all it's all about when you get your fighter to the top that they're ready to stay at the top, and by then they have tasted all different styles, all different ages, all different patterns of fighting. When they meet a guy, then they're ready when they're at the championship level. Terence Crawford, all business on his face. Very, very fast hands. And all determination by Tomas Delorme. Crawford has the exact positioning, so he's making him miss a lot of those shots. And in his mind, hoping that the bigger guy gets fatigued. And I'm not surprised by the aggressiveness early of Delorme because that was kind of their game plan coming into the fight is just to come out and be aggressive and set the tone right from the start. The first four or five rounds, they don't want to let, you know, those go to bud just kind of feeling things out. They wanted to make sure to push the pre push the pressure. But Terrence is so smart. And as you mentioned, Colonel, just let him kind of get these rounds out because later on Terrence won't fade. Terrence will even come on stronger towards the end of the fight. So I don't think that, that he's too worried right now. Delorme has a very stiff jab. He's been using that since the opening bell. His start came out. As soon as that bell rang, he threw three or four really hard left jabs in the first 30 seconds, and he's still utilizing it. And you talked about him feigning, and then you just saw three feints in a row with Crawford just trying to see if he can get him to move a certain way consistently so he can nail him with a right-hand shot. Delorme... By the way, it's interesting. He says he, he feels like he's representing all the Latino fans all around the world. He said, and not just the uh, Dominican Republic fans, or not just where he spent a lot of time in Puerto Rico. He said, but all of them. <laughs> Including Mexico. <laughs> I did the fight last week in Mexico, and it was four Mexican fighters against four Puerto Rican fighters, and all the Puerto Rican fighters won. So I said, are you representing the Mexican fighters that fought us? No, 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 no. <laughs> But we get an idea what he means. He's very proud uh, Latino, and as you can tell by the flag of, of uh, Puerto Rico that he has for trunks. Philosophy of that, he feels that eight eyes watching him is better than just two eyes watching. And they all have their, their roles, right, Colonel? I mean, he was very specific as to they each have their, their own part of that, what they do, but there is one voice that they'll listen to in the corner. All right, so here we go, round number three. Delorme with a Puerto Rican flag. And the fancy trunks will call him. And uh, Terrence Crawford, red and uh, black. Crawford, of course, with the black shoes. And Delorme with the white gloves. For the first real good hard shot that uh, Crawford has landed. Yeah. And for the first time, he really looks intent on maybe doing something offensively in this round. Well, it's time for him to do that. He hasn't switched to southpaw, which. Uh, against Beltran in the last fight, he had already gone southpaw by the third round. Whoa! Just open up there. But Delorme misses a lot of shots, and that's because Crawford really knows his positioning. Catches those with the gloves, lets his left hand go. Crawford, you can tell just the way he's moving that he's more intense on landing some shots in this third round. And he has landed a couple. One heavy one, one light one. Delorme very, very well prepared for this fight. Good friends with Felix Tito Trinidad, as they talk often. He loves uh, Tito Trinidad, who will be inducted into the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame this year. And then bring a night hordes with him, Rick. <laughs> Half of Puerto Rico is coming to Las Vegas in August. Crawford's still not getting hit hard by this guy. He's slipping punches very well. He's, he's little, not landing a lot. Sorry, Rich. He's a little more wary of him, though, if you take a look at, the, at his stance now. And how he's, uh, I think he's uh, expecting Bud, because Bud is giving him a little bit more this round, to come with something. Oh, that's a nice jab. He pops that jab out there so effectively, doesn't he? Certainly does. There's that looping shot again that uh, Delorme is known for with the right hand. It didn't land on uh, Crawford, but it got the attention of the crowd. There's that jab again that Christina alluded to. 
Real stiff jab. He throws it technically perfect. Nice body shot by Crawford. That got a rise out of the crowd. They saw it. Delorme misses with his left. Crawford misses with his right. This is the best Crawford round of the fight. He's getting some respect from Delorme now. Well, he, you know, we both said, uh, we all said that, you know, he needs to do this in the third round. He couldn't really give away another round. Well, he certainly didn't hear. A definite winning round for Terrence Crawford. Ah! All right, the bell is the third. We've got a dandy for you, folks. Terrence Bud Crawford moving up to 140 into the vacant WBO Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. Thomas Delorme, a natural junior welterweight at 140, the bigger man. And it's a very even fight as we go to four. Scheduled for the championship rounds of 12. We're in Arlington, Texas, on the campus of the University of Texas, Arlington, at the College Park Center. Delorme with his back to you to the left of your screen with the white shoes with the black shoes is Terrence Crawford. Delorme, when he was 15 years old, living in the Dominican, he wanted to get better opposition. He wanted to learn more about the sport. He moved to Puerto Rico, and that's where he really became an excellent boxer. Well, we could go on for about 10 minutes on the great boxers that came out of Puerto Rico. Tito Trinidad is only one of them. Fredo Gomez, Fredo Escalera, Wilfred Benitez, Miguel Cotto, <laughs> Miguel Cotto, and on and on you can go. <laughs> Felix Verdejo. He's the one. <laughs> He's the one on the come right now. I'll tell you. Delarme said, you know, for this fight, everything I've learned, I'm bringing everything to this fight. So you kind of get the feeling that his whole life, his whole career has been pointing toward this night. That's how he looks at it. Which is why I was so surprised when I heard that he wasn't training with Robert Garcia anymore for, for this moment, because I thought that having Robert in his corner would have given him the best chance to win. But he wanted to be home in Puerto Rico and was very adamant about that in our meeting that he wanted all the attention and all the focus because right. he knew that this was the, the biggest fight of his career. And, and Robert obviously has other big fighters that he trains. Yeah, Roy Jones uh, in the uh, fighter meetings yesterday talked about, you know, all of the uh, strength and conditioning coaches. And, of course, uh, Crawford has one. Desmond is his name, and Des does a great job with him. But that's getting the body in shape. But Roy says you need time separate from the strength and conditioning in the gym, in the ring. Right. Training for the boxing part of it. I agree with Roy. I thought he was making some great points on that. Well, Roy, Roy. Bernard Hopkins, two very intelligent guys. I can listen to them all the time because they really know what they're talking about when it comes to analyzing just everything in boxing. Terrence starting to enjoy himself in there with that jab. That jab is becoming a nice little weapon for Terrence Crawford right now. Look how quick it is. He's having a good time in there, Turner. Backing him off. And he lets go with that right hand. He wants to land that pretty bad. And he hasn't switched the south bar at all. Two solid right hands and put the exclamation point in Ter Terrence Crawford's 10-9 round. And he winks at him. Yeah, this is getting good. <laughs> WBO Junior Welterweight Championship of the World on the line. Crawford uh, to the right of your screen in the red trunks. That's Delorme in the flag of the country of Puerto Rico. You know, when you talk about, you know, Crawford being a ring tactician and how smart he is in the ring, this is what he's showing right now with Delorme. He's showing a lot of patience right now because he was juiced at the end of that last round, but he's totally under control. The Lorme is going to be frustrated in that he's throwing a lot of punches. And his jab is falling short. He's missed with that wild right hand. 
had the decent first couple of rounds and then things kind of turned around a little bit. That left hand was a little bit low and Crawford's hands are so fast he got that right hand right on top of it. And I think Terrence was playing with him mentally a little bit at the end of that last round too. Absolutely. You know, Terrence is such a good athlete. He loves his own basketball ability. He and Roy Jones were getting into it yesterday about who's the better basketball player. So we probably haven't heard the end of that. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything in the meeting, but uh, I played basketball one time with Muhammad Ali and Jimmy Ellis, and the two of them could shoot buckets, especially <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy probably could have been a professional basketball player. But it, it just goes to great athletes. The one they kind of slid that right off of uh, Crawford. You just get the feeling when you talk to Bud that no matter what sport he would have chose to play, he would have been successful at it, but we're sure glad that he chose boxing. Well, he's a great representative of the sport. And I think that's what he wants to be. He wants to be a great representative of the sport. I don't think he really likes some of his attitude and the anger that he had, anger problems that he had as a youngster. Well, he's certainly lost all of that. In fact, he said, uh, you know, people wanted him to say more things like a Floyd Mayweather. That's Floyd's style. It's not his style. Yeah, so and, Floyd, not and Floyd, when we deal with him, is no as near as bad as he appears when he makes some public statements. Uh, but that's not uh, Crawford's style at all. Bob Barham thinks that uh, Terrence Crawford is certainly a, a big future star for top rank and the world. Crawford, there, you know, got squared up there and started going with the right hand leads. And the next thing we'll see him go southpaw. That's a closer round, but I think Crawford still won it. Terrence Crawford in that round. I think he's got to start touching him even on the chest with his jab. And, and maybe, Rich, you know, the four inches that Terrence has is, is something to be said for. That was a slip uh, by Crawford this time of night. The canvas, especially the area where the paint is, the Takati sign can get slippery. And it comes from the water that's in the corners of the fighters. It's on the bottom of their shoes. Oh, nice. That puts him back on his heels. Is the Lome hurt? He, he goes is. down. He goes down on one knee. He hit him with a shot, put him back up against the ropes, and he was hurt. Then he caught him with the right hand and then the left hand to put him down. I'm so Delorme is first to go down. I'm looking at Delorme's eyes. They are clear, but his legs were wobbly from the left-right combination. It was a beauty. Well, that answers another solid right hand. A lot of time to go in this round. Uppercuts, can he stop him right now? He better start answering some punches, but the referee won't have any choice. That's the second time down. His legs are really rubbery. This referee... Ramos may not let this go on if he's too uh, glassy-eyed. He says step forward. Here we go. There is no free knockdown rule, but if he clobbers him hard, he'll stop the fight anyway. Crawford in total command. Bang the body on the chin again. The right hand is there. Can he land it? Wow, with the left hand. Right hand. Left hook downstairs. Crawford shining now. He's not back totally, and Crawford pouring it on. Last little shot. He better answer. The ref is going to stop the fight. He's giving him the excuse, and down he goes for the third time. That's it. The fight's all over. He's out on his feet. Crawford has knocked out Thomas Delorme. Well, that answers the questions. Can he step up with power? Terrence Bud Crawford is just getting better and better and better. And that is not good news for those who wondered about his punching power at 140 pounds. Colonel, he punched harder at 140 pounds. Well, nobody has really damaged Delorme like that. Delorme was stopped one other time in his career against uh, Ebregu. That was in the seventh round. This was in the sixth round. And that's a brilliant, brilliant performance for this man. Well, it was a beautiful one-two combination. There it is, the left and the right. 
the jab and watch Terrence now. He knows he's got him. He senses the predicament that Delorme is in. He saw him bounce back and Delorme was wobbly right there. And Terrence Crawford went in and that left hook scored the first knockdown of the fight. But it was really that original left-right combination. And you see how wobbly Delorme was when he went back. That left was just window dressing. That first left-right combination is the one that did it. Now Delorme there, his eyes were clear, but his legs were a big problem. And he never was really able to get them back. That's still the first knockdown of the fight. You look at Delorme, he knows exactly what's going on, but he just never was able to track his legs again. And at the end of the fight, Crawford proving himself a very good finisher, a surprising finisher, went in and just continued to punch and punch and punch till finally Delorme went down. Third knockdown, Rafael Ramos stops the fight at that point. Very impressed with the finishing instincts of Terrence Crawford in this fight, like I have never seen him utilize finishing instincts before. He was looking for a knockout, and man, he got it. Man, oh man, look at this stuff. Colonel, you remember the old saying, people don't like to use it anymore. They feel it's politically incorrect of killer instinct, but let me tell you. I he, use it he because used that's it. what he has. He, he just showed he knows how to finish. He closed the show, Terrence Crawford. We all know that we're not talking about killing, injuring somebody. It's a, it's a term used in boxing, meaning very aggressive to finish a fight. So I'm not worried about the political correctness of that statement. All right, Michael Buffer will have to make it official. So without further ado, we will go up to Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, the star continues to rise for the fighting pride of Omaha, Nebraska. He is still undefeated, and he is now a two-time world champion and the new WBO super lightweight champion of the world, Terrence Bud Crawford. Robert is a brand new WBO junior welterweight 140 pound champion of the world.